Hello and welcome to Cornwall in the UK for our new three-part series, bringing you quite simply the best hotels in this beautiful part of England. Cornwall is one of the UK's most popular tourist hotspots and its beaches and towns are world famous. So, visiting Cornwall is a no-brainer. But where do you stay? Well, we're here to show you. We chose three of the very best hotels, stayed in them, filmed them and reviewed them. This one is my personal favourite, but you might disagree. Click on the subscribe button to be notified when we reveal the other two hotels and make your own mind up. But for now, we welcome you to the beautiful village of St Moors and the Idle Rocks. The village of St Moors is situated on the south coast of Cornwall on the tip of the Roseland Peninsula, designated part of Cornwall's area of outstanding natural beauty for its landscape and unrivalled coastal scenery. Its medieval harbour is linked to Falmouth across the Carrick Roads, which is a wide part of the River Fal adjoining the English Channel, by the St Moors Foot Passenger Ferry, which runs year-round, and during the summer a variety of ferries take you to those hard-to-reach but achingly beautiful places along the Fal and Percule Rivers. <laughs> the village has its own castle too, built in the times of Henry VIII to counter the invasion threat of the continent. It also has not one, but three beaches and a range of pubs, cafes and restaurants, as well as some interesting local shops and galleries. But what makes St Moore's one of my personal favourite locations in Cornwall is, well, simply put, its preserved quaintness and the chocolate box beauty of the residences that surround the harbour. Because of St Moore's exclusive location, wonderful ambience and unexpandable size due to topographical restrictions, property prices are astronomically high. It's not surprising it's dubbed the West London of Cornwall. Oh, and have I mentioned the centrepiece anchored proudly in the predominant location in the harbour? Oh yeah, I'd almost forgot why we were here the Idle Rocks Hotel. Built in 1913 on the site of the old St Moore's Bakery and seemingly chiselled into the rocks on which it's embedded, the Idle Rocks history as the epitome of luxury began in the 1930s and stretches to this day under the ownership of David and Karen Richards, who extensively refurbished it during the first half of 2013, to the magnificent boutique home from home it is today. Karen is an interior designer and her vision and hand is in every inch of this place. Everywhere you look there are details, surprises and colourful mementos that make it really feel that you're staying in their own exquisite home. The quality of materials and fittings are evident everywhere. Despite all this comfy opulence, Helen's favourite place to while away the hours is the outside terrace, one of the hotel's biggest assets. And if the sun is shining and you have a drink in hand, watching the St Moore's world go by here is a constant joy and you'll never want to leave. Doesn't get more relaxing than this. If you drive here, there is ample hotel car parking at one of two locations. The smaller location opposite the hotel has a Tesla destination charger, but be warned, people do park in the allotted space which can be quite tiresome. The hotel could improve this experience simply by putting a cone down when they know someone is arriving that day with an electric car. Saves all the hassle of politely getting somebody to move when you need to charge. Each of the 19 bedrooms are unique and designed with home comforts and little touches that keep you discovering new things the more you look around. 
right from having your names on the door to the bottomless coffee machine. No detail is left unattended. The vast majority of the rooms have a harbour view, but because we booked late, our room, number 11, did not face the water, but that didn't matter to us. It was utterly beautiful, sumptuously comfy, with a huge bathroom, including the bath and enormous shower, which, believe me, was almost impossible to remove yourself from once you were under it. Even so, we'd love to be able to try out the harbour-facing rooms when we next stay. Now, dining at the Idle Rocks is as what you would expect, a luxurious and mouth-watering experience. The multi-award winning restaurant is situated to take advantage of the south-facing aspect, flooded with natural light and those fabulous views over the harbour. Each table is placed to give the diner the best view possible, with tiered flooring that elevates the diners at the rear so they can get that vista too. Pre-Covid, breakfast time was normally centred around this huge kitchen table, bursting with juices, cereals, home-baked pastries and breads, cold meats and cheeses. But with the current restrictions, you are instead presented at your table with a selection of goodies waiting for you and the cooked menu doesn't disappoint either with carefully cooked and well presented favourites. Dinner time is where the chefs really get to flex their culinary muscles. Head chef Dorian Yanmat, I hope I pronounced that correctly, joined in January this year and is no stranger to fine dining, having honed his craft and sharpened his knives as head chef at Raymond Blanc's two Michelin stars Le Manoir, one of the UK's finest restaurants. Much of the menu is sourced locally and fresh as it gets and includes daily available locally caught fish and shellfish and vegetables and meats from local farms all cooked meticulously and presented with creativity and painstaking care. This is a truly fine dining experience and we'd recommend booking dinner, bed and breakfast for your stay to get the complete experience. Post-dinner relaxation in the lounge is a must. When things get a bit nippy, the fire is lit and the lighting is cosy and ambient. Simply the most restful place for your pre-bed tipple from the bar. And there's only so much you can fit into a two-night stay and we didn't get the opportunity to investigate the Idle Rock's sister hotel, the St Moore's Hotel, just a few yards up the road, enjoying yet another prime harbourside position. When we return, we'll definitely explore more, but on this occasion, we were frustratingly out of time. In summary, there really aren't many hotels in Cornwall and dare I say the whole of rural UK to rival the Idle Rocks. I can't find much, if anything, to fault. If I was scraping the beautifully varnished barrel, I'd say it's not the cheapest experience, although I maintain you do get what you pay for. The car parking is a little bit frustrating, especially if you drive an electric car, and St Moore's is a little bit more difficult to get to than many other places to stay in Cornwall, although that's most definitely part of its exclusivity, and for us, its attraction. But none of these matters a jot when you're here enjoying the hospitality of the super friendly staff and the sumptuousness of the accommodation. That's why it's my favourite hotel in Cornwall and one of my favourites anywhere. Thank you for watching and please give this review a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you really didn't like it, please click the thumbs down twice. And whatever, please consider subscribing as we have two other fabulous hotels in Cornwall you're going to love and we will be revealing them very soon. Thank you.